Well, hey, hey, welcome to the webinar tonight, Four Steps to Uncovering Your Life Purpose and Your Passion. And I'm excited that you're here. Thank you so much for coming and spending this hour with me. It tells me that you are really serious about figuring this out and you're ready to wake up to your life. So what do I mean by wake up? Well, are you awake to your life or are you still asleep? You know, you can be alive and still not be awake to your own life. I know because it happened to me. So welcome everyone. If you're watching this recording, there may be some parts of this that get outdated, like at the end when I mentioned my Life Purpose course launch date again. But the content here is still gonna be wonderful no matter when you watch this recording. Okay, so I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for taking that action step. For yourself, you're investing in you and you're starting to wake up to your own life. So today I am awakened. I call myself an awakened woman <laughs> and I'm confident in who I am. I know where I'm going. I'm doing what I love to do. I know what it is I love to do. I know my purpose. I know that I'm amazing and brilliant and wonderful and powerful. And I say that in the most humble way. I'm not saying that arrogantly. I'm saying that because I've come to know the value and worth of myself as an individual and what I bring to the table. And you have that same worth and value in you. But maybe you don't see it yet. So maybe you're not awake. Maybe you're just starting to wake up. I remember about 10 years ago. So I'm 65 now. So 10 years ago, I was 55. And I had an experience of waking up, literally. It was like this alarm went off in my spirit and I woke up to my life and I remember being like, wait, where am I? What am I doing? Who am I? What is it I really want to do? What have I been doing all this time? How did 50 some years go by so fast? You know, uh, what is my destiny? What is my purpose now? You know, because our purpose can change over time. And so I, it was like this waking up and I could have just, you know, pressed the snooze alarm, gone back to sleep. I could have said, you know, it's just going to take too much time. It's going to take too much effort and too much work to figure this thing out. But I didn't. I stayed awake because I made a choice. I made a conscious choice in that moment that I was going to do whatever I needed to do to figure out what my purpose was. I was going to learn what I needed to learn contact who I needed to contact, invest wherever I needed to invest because I needed to find this out. And so I woke up to my life. And so that's really what I'm bringing to you tonight. You know, 10, 15 years ago, I was still that woman that was a victim to her past, the past abuse and manipulation. When I was very young, 19 years old, I was drugged and raped by a college student. And that devastated me. My soul was injured deeply. I didn't know it at the time, and I didn't tell anyone. But it affected the rest of my life up until about 10 or 15 years ago when I truly got free. And that led me down this path of just being taken advantage of by men, manipulated. And the messages that I received during that time was that I was worthless. I didn't have worth and value. I should just go stand in a corner and just be quiet. Don't speak up. Don't own your voice. Don't try to be something because you're nothing. I mean, that was the message that I received. And then about four years later, I was told by my boyfriend that my worth and value was determined by how much money a man would pay to have sex with me. So I became a prostitute from the time I was 23 till I was 26. And that took the devastation even further and deeper. I got saved at the end of that. I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and became a Christian and I was free from the lifestyle and I started to grow and, and get a lot of things changed for me. But it was another 30 to 40 years before I fully woke up to who I truly am. I still had a lot of those beliefs in me and a lot of those messages about worth and value. And so, you know, I spent 20 years as a teacher. That was a part of my life purpose and I loved it. I, it was fulfilling, but then there came a point where that ended. And then I went into owning a business with my husband and office manager. And about that time is midlife time. And that was when I started to realize, you know what, I'm not really fully living. 
I've sort of been walking on the outside. I've been sort of like sleepwalking through my life because there were parts of me that were hidden away. And that had direct, that, that was directly influenced by my past. So I wasn't fully awake. But once I did that work, I woke up gradually over a period of time, but I woke up and I woke up and I woke up and I started to really see the real me. And I started to really love myself and find my value and my worth. And so now that's the message I bring to women. That's the passion I have in my heart is to help other women get healing from wounds and from messages that they've heard their whole life about who they are and really discover who they truly are and then line that up with what they're doing so that they feel fulfilled and happy and satisfied. And that's what I'm all about. And that's what this webinar is all about tonight. So I want to share with you four steps that I went through through this process of waking up and discovering my true self and my true purpose and what I've taken clients through. And I just have to tell you this right up front, though, that this is a long process. A one hour webinar will not completely get you there. It's just going to get you started. I have packed this webinar with a ton of content. So get your notebook and your pen out ready to take notes and let's get this thing rolling. So I'm going to be sharing my screen with you and hang on just a second. So there we go. So as I'm sharing this tonight, I will also be sharing a little bit with you about my life purpose course because these four steps are in that course and we go into depth in each one of these steps. So I want you to know about it. And if you decide not, that's not for you right now, that's perfectly fine. This webinar will definitely give you stuff to start with. I'm gonna give you some exercises. I can give you some ideas of how to get yourself started. But if you're interested in going deeper, I want to invite you into that course. So I will be touching on it throughout the webinar. I'm going to be completely transparent with you. I will be sharing about that course because I believe in it and I know what it does. I know the power of it to change people's lives, especially women's lives, which is what I'm all about. So step number one is discover your who. What makes you, you? Who are you really? So when I started waking up to my life, that's when I started to realize that I didn't really know who I was at my core. I had been trying to be that person that other people said I should be, or I was trying to please others and get acceptance and love. And so I tried to fit in and merge into other people, whoever I was with at the time, my first husband, even my, my husband now or earlier in my life, boyfriends or friends. I tried to merge my personality and who I was with them. And I tended to, you know, idealize them really and want to be them. Or I tried to please others by doing what I did. You know, I, I tried to uh, do the job that I was told I should do or, um, you know, the whatever career path, you know. And uh, it just became this one taking one identity on and another identity and it started to really cover up who i really was and i really believe at our core we are lights we are light beings when we were created we were made in the image of god and he is light and what happens is you go through your life you start taking on all these things people are telling you that you are or these things that you should be or you should do and it starts to cover us up and it starts to cover up our light and we get to the place where we don't even know who we truly are so I had not taken the time to discover me so I want to invite you into that process it's a journey to discover you you know it really is because we've got to we've got to start seeing what those identities are that we've taken on that aren't really us and we've got to give ourselves permission and We've got to come to this understanding that our past does not define who we are and it doesn't dictate where we're going in our future, right? We've got to let go of some of that, all of it. We've got to uncover and find out who we are and fall in love with who we are because if we don't love ourselves, we're not going to be able to love others and we're not going to be able to live to our true purpose. It won't happen. Trust me. So it is a journey and it's a process. Now, when you first meet somebody for the first time, usually they'll say, hey, what do you do, right? Most people say, what do you do? 
I don't think I've ever met someone that said, who are you? Who are you being? They ask you what you do because we equate what we do with our identity of who we are, right? But who we are is not necessarily what we do. If we are being our true selves, then what we're doing will flow out of that and it'll be an alignment. It'll be an expression of our true selves, but it isn't who we are. It's what we do. So I was a teacher for many years. That was my identity. I thought that's who I was. I was a worship leader in a church for many years. I took that on as an identity. I was Shauna's mom. I was Bob's wife, you know? Um, but when I started to wake up to my life, I started thinking, you know what? I want to find out who Janelle is. And so I began that journey to find my real self. And I'm going to share with you what I did on that journey. So you've got to know that you are a unique creation. There is a unique design to who you are. And you do have an assignment on this earth. You do have a calling and a destiny and a purpose that's assigned to you. But you've got to first understand that you're a unique person and you have unique qualities and a design to who you are inside that's like no other person on the face of the earth. It's like nobody else that's ever lived. Your identity is unique to you. You have a unique DNA, right? That's how we identify people. Your fingerprints, those are unique to you. The thought patterns that you have based on your experiences or based on your opinions and your values, how you see the world, how you show up in the world, your habits, your memories, your preferences, how you relate to other people, your perspectives, the talents that you have, all of that blended together makes you very unique and special. There's nobody else like you. The only thing you can ever truly master is being you. Nobody else can be you and you can't be someone else. And so paying attention and spending time figuring out who you are is so important. It's number one. It is number one. So we're going to look at two key aspects to discovering your unique design or who you are. And that is strengths and personality. These are innate, built into you. They don't change. You see different parts of them coming out at different times, depending on what you're doing, where you're at, how you're interacting. But they are a part of your unique inner design and makeup as a person. So we're going to look at these separately. The first one is strengths. Now, when I'm talking about strengths, I'm talking about innate abilities, aptitudes, talents, gifts. It's those things that you're really good at naturally. You can do it really well without hardly trying. You've always kind of been good at it, right? So there's people that are naturally athletic, naturally musical, naturally artistic. You know, you might be somebody who's really good at analyzing data or seeing patterns in things or coming up with solutions or thinking strategically. Maybe you're somebody that gathers people to you and you become, a, you're just a natural leader. Or maybe you're just really good at speaking and presenting and getting your ideas across. You could be somebody who has a natural aptitude for writing and putting words together that powerfully impact our hearts and souls. There are natural innate abilities within you, talents, if you will, or you know the raw talent, like you think of ore that, that's natural in the earth. It has to be refined, it has to be developed, but it's there. And you can see this in children when they're young. You know, one of mine was teaching. I just loved to teach. And I would have the neighborhood kids come over and I would play. I wouldn't play school. I would teach them. And it was important to me that they learned something new. And those kids kept coming back, interestingly enough. But it's really important to see your natural strengths because when you build on them, those are the areas where you can excel, where you can be exceptional at something, where you build your expertise. And not only that, it's, area, it's an area where you will be very successful and happy and satisfied and fulfilled. When you're trying to build on areas that are not your strengths, you get drained when you do them. You don't look forward to them. They don't come easy to you. It's more like striving and takes effort. So 
your strengths will sh were, are innate, they're built into you, but they show up in your outward performance. These are things that help you, that aid you to perform really, really well in some area or several areas. Most people just assume that they're, they don't realize that their strengths are strengths. They just assume that, you know, I've always had that or always been that way. I haven't seen it as anything special or unique. And that's because we're just used to them and we don't think much about them. But when you dive in and you really see them and you name them and you start to see where they show up in your life, then you start to see how special and unique you really are. So there's an instrument I like to use for this called the Strengths Finder. It's produced by Gallup. You can go out and Google that and find it and take it yourself. It's $19.99 and you'll get three reports. They're awesome. They are very uh, accurate. I've never seen them to not be really pretty bright on. There's going to be some reports, some things in those reports that won't be exactly you, but there's going to be a lot in there that you're going to go, wow, that's me. And what they do is they give you your top five talent themes. And the way that Gallup defines a strength is you take your talent theme and you add to it skill, knowledge, practice, you know, education, all of that. And then it devel develops into an area of strength and even super strength throughout your life. Um, the Strengths Finder assessment is included in my Life Purpose course. You don't have to pay extra for that. And then the next thing is personality. So your personality is your unique inner traits, whereas your strengths are inner abilities, natural abilities that you are expressed out through your performance. Your personality is your soul's inner workings, like how, they're influenced, how they influence your actions, but it's more what's happening inside you. And uh, there are many, many um, assessments out there. Personality is usually arranged into what they call types, right? And so there's different personality type assessments that these are all based on years and years of research and psychological research, neuroscience, things like that. The very first person to talk about personality was a Greek philosopher. This was before Christ, centuries before Christ. And that was Hippocrates. And he based that on his observation of human behaviors. And so, of course, this has developed over centuries. And so most of the really good ones are very accurate. It's important really to understand your personality because then you understand why you relate to yourself and to the world the way that you do you understand how you take in and process information. How do you, or what do you normally naturally tune into around you? You know, um, how do you make this, or why you make decisions the way that you do is based on your personality traits, or your personality type, how you exert influence um, in your world. And uh, so it's really important to understand that because it has a huge impact on your personal development. One of the things I've discovered, and I use, I'm starting to use a lot, is the Enneagram, which is an ancient personality typing uh, tool. And in there, they talk about how our personalities can be on this spectrum. So you have an unhealthy end all the way to healthy. Same personality type, but it shows up differently if you are unhealthy as opposed to healthy. And what I mean by that is your personal growth, like becoming more aware of who you are and learning more things and, and getting a, a real understanding of how you show up in the world and why, and having more choice in your reactions and your responses and being more conscious and really working on developing yourself. And that's really what today's about, this webinar. These are ways that you can develop yourself so that you get to know your purpose and your passion. And so if you understand that about personality, then you can look back through your life and see, oh yeah, okay, well, that, in that time of my life, like I can look back and see the times where I was not healthy, I was hurting, I was um, injured, right? And so my personality showed up in this place differently than today, where I'm much healthier. 
And it's really interesting to dive into this and to see and understand yourself to this degree. And it can have a huge impact on your um, the decisions that you make when you are looking at what is my purpose, because you want to make sure that you're lining up with your passions, your personality, and your strengths. And we'll get into the passions in a minute. But you want to line everything up with who you are so that you are fulfilled and that you are really enjoying life and satisfied and that you are giving the best of you to the world in your place of purpose. So that's super important. So like I said, the instrument I like to use is the Enneagram. It's super accurate. It's very in-depth. There is so much to this, and I'm learning more and more about it. My goal is to be an expert in this one day. But there's also Myers-Briggs, which you've probably heard of, and there's DISC, which is used a lot in the working world. There's some other ones that come up with a name for your personality based on um, animals and colors and there's one, I forget what it's called, but phlegmatic and um, choleric, you know, those personality types, those are kind of the earlier versions. There's also one called 16 personalities. I use that a lot, and that is included in my life purpose course as well as the Enneagram. So I use the Enneagram, the 16 personalities, which is very similar to Myers-Briggs. Those two you can take for free, and then the Strengths Finder. And we look at those, we take them apart, we see what all those reports say. I, I send you through some exercises to really glean from those reports and then we come together in live coaching calls as a group and we even glean some more out of it. So we really go deeper. But you can take those and look at your reports and go through and highlight things that really stand out to you and ask yourself, you know, does that really resonate with me? Where does that show up in my life? And get a real understanding, you know, see what themes and keywords and phrases are showing up as you take those reports. And it's super helpful to do that because you, you get to know your who. Um, so I want to ask you a question here. If you know what your personality type is, or you've taken some assessments, or you know what your strengths are, you know, just jot those down and maybe send that to me in, in an email. I would love to know. And by the way, if you're not a part of my Facebook group, I would love to have you join me in there and take part in what we're doing in there. A lot of great stuff is happening. I ask questions. I run polls. I share videos. Um, I, sh I do my own videos. You know, it's just a great place of interacting. And I need to take a sip of water. So I invite you to join in there and let us know what you have learned about yourself so far. Okay, so as I said, what you can do here is take these assessments, look through the reports and the results, and highlight the things that really stand out to you. And then ask yourself, what are the themes that are emerging here? How do I see and where do I see these qualities showing up in my life, in my work, in my relationships? in the way that I think, the things that I do for fun, how do I process information, how do I make decisions, and just see how that lines up with what these reports are showing you. That really helped me a lot when I was on this journey. When I took the Strengths Finder and, and saw my five top talents, I was like, oh, no wonder I love to teach. Oh my gosh, that's, that is amazing. And then I was starting to look at coaching as a profession and I realized that my strengths line right up in line with being a coach and then when I looked at my personality again it was like oh my gosh this is who I am really and how I express myself through this vehicle of being a coach is perfect for me and that's why I feel so fulfilled so that's what I want for you um, another thing and I want to share let's see here I'm gonna look, I'm gonna share something else with you and we'll come back to this. I wanted to share two exercises that I use that, um, well actually one right now and we'll come back to another one. So here's an exercise I use a lot with clients. It's called identify your hidden strengths because they can be hidden underneath a skill. A skill is different than a strength. A skill is something you've learned. 
whereas a strength is something that's innately in you, just naturally. Now you can increase your strengths and make them even more hone them, I guess you could say sharpen them by skill, by, by knowledge, by learning things, and by practice. So um, here are some questions you can ask yourself. What were your three favorite subjects in school? And just write down whatever pops in your head right away. And then think, what would be some possible strengths there? What did you yearn to do when you were young? That's a clue to possible talents and strengths. What do you get complimented on the most? Somebody might say, man, you really have a beautiful way of decorating. Or I just love the way that you're so thoughtful. Or you are somebody that really picks up and understands where people are coming from. Those are strengths underneath there. What do you like about yourself the most? Oh, well, that's a tough one because we often don't really want to look at that. We're too, um, we feel like we're being prideful if we look at the good things in us. And we often just don't see those things that we like, but take some time when do that. What do you enjoy doing? When do you lose sense of time? And you just get into flow. Those are some clues to possible strengths. What energizes you? What drains you? That'll tell you what's not a strength. What are you most proud of? Accomplishments or something you've overcome in your life. And then look at the strengths that were under, underneath that that enabled you to have that success. What knowledge and life experiences make you unique, including from childhood, and look underneath that. Because things that we've learned and things we've experienced, sometimes the strengths are underneath that. And what are some unusual skills that you have? And then you can look at patterns and themes and then list the top five strengths. Now that's something you can do on your own without taking an assessment and you can get a lot of information out of doing that. All right, I'm going to go back here <clears throat> to my presentation. So now we're going to go on to step two, discover your why. Why is so important. It's your foundation. It's what motivates you. It's your why that keeps you going when things get tough, right? These are the things that fire you up. These are the things that drive you and, and uh, energize you and get you excited. So think about causes. Uh, let's go to passions. Passions is part of your why. Think about the causes that you speak up about or you're, in, you're willing to invest your time and your energy into. They're important to you. What gets you excited when you talk about it or you think about it? Our passions help us define what's most important to us, what we really, really care about what we energetically pursue. Passions are the underlying motivation behind our life purpose. So my life purpose is as a coach to help empower women and help them see the gifts in, within them and find their path. Well, underlying that is my passion to see women be all that they can be, to come out from under uh, where they felt like they've been kind of hiding, right? Or where they felt like they should be quiet and they should play small. No, I want to, my passion is to see women step up fully into their place and, and do the things they're called to do and be confident in who they are and love who they are. So that passion underlies my life purpose where I express it through this vessel of coaching. But do you see how they're a little bit different? So coaching is not who I am. Being a coach is not who I am. I am a coach because of who I am. Hopefully that makes some sense. All right. Yeah. So passions are the urges that compel us to do something. And our passions you, are lined up with our values. And we're going to look at our values here in just a minute. The next way to discover your why is look at your dreams and your desires. Dreams are powerful images. They give us visual images of our passions overlaid on the future. So dreams are what we hope comes in the future. Dreams are things we're wishing for in the future. And it takes, they take our passions and they create a visual image of what we want to see happen, what we hope happens, what we wish our life would look like. And a dream is what you wish for, whereas a goal is something you're committed to accomplishing. 
So your dreams, you can take your dreams and your passions and create goals out of them so that you actually take action. But if you never do that, then a dream just stays a dream. But dreams are important because they reveal to us our deepest desires and our passions. And they give us hope. And like I said, they give us a visual image to attach to a vision, to our goal. They motivate us and they dreams ignore obstacles. You know, when you're having a dream, whether you're asleep or awake, you're just seeing, you know, you know, you're seeing yourself living in that nice big beach house and whatever, and it's wonderful and you're not seeing any obstacles. Whereas with passions, you can have that fiery passion and desire or uh, urge to take action, but then an obstacle can come along and stop you. Dreams don't look at the obstacles, so they're important. We want to have dreams. We, we want to take our dreams from our childhood and the ones that we've kind of stuffed and put up on the shelf. We want to take them out again and look at them because they're important. You know, they really, really are important. They help us to see our passions. They give form to the passions in our heart, those things firing us up, those things that are important to us. They give form to that and they, we, it helps us to bring them into reality. So it's important to pay attention to our dreams and look underneath of them and see what are the passions underneath there. What are the deep desires under the, underneath those dreams? And then values are also a part of our why. Now values are super important. They describe what our passions are about. They describe to us what motivates us and why we make certain choices. Values are principles that we live by. They're the underlying subconscious beliefs and perspectives and things that we are, they're deeply ingrained and we hold on to them. They're very important. We, it, it's that thing that I must have in my life. Like, for example, I must have honesty and integrity. No matter what I'm doing, if, if it's not lining up with that value, I am out of sync and I don't feel right at all. So they're the driving force behind our work and our passions. And we're often not consciously aware of them. So digging down and, and discovering what your top values are is super important because then it'll help you align everything up, making sure, okay, when you, when you start to look at, okay, I want to go in this direction. This is my passion. This is my strength. This is my calling. Is it in alignment with my values? Are all my values being honored as I'm walking this path, right? Super important. So you can do a number of, of exercises around values, and I'm going to go ahead and share again another exercise, and this is a sample values list. There's tons and tons of value. I mean, you just can name your own. There's no like set uh, list of values that are all the values in the world, but this is just an example. Things like accomplishment, adventure, authenticity beauty, boldness, compassion, community, creativity, ease, discovery, excellence. You know, these are all kinds of different values. Humor, harmony, generosity, freedom, friendship, family, loyalty, love, listening, peace. Productivity could be a value for you. Romance, safety, strength, spontaneity, trust, tradition, that's a value for many people, unity, wisdom. So these are just some examples of what a value may look like. And so what you want to do is just write a list of values and that you think are your values. And then you want to narrow them down to the top 10 or preferably the top five. And then you wanna make value statements, like I value being honest because this is what it does for me or why it's so important to you. You wanna identify why, because a value is something that's very important to you. You can't live without it, you must have it. So it's helpful to write that out in a statement because as I said, values really describe to us what we're passionate about, what's important to us, why we make the choices and the decisions that we make. Phew. All right. So that's just step two. Now in my course, we go into depth in each one of these. Plus I add in two more that I don't have time to share with you in this webinar, but we look at vision and we create a vision board 
And we also look at energy, which is how you're showing up at the world. You know, how do you react to stress? How do you respond to things? How do you, what are your emotions and thoughts that are going on in any given moment? And there's default patterns that we fall into and they all have an energy to them. And so it's a helpful tool to use, to use all day long. Like where am I showing up energetically and how can I shift myself to where I want to be? It gives you a lot of choice, but there's a whole lot to that. And I, I can't go into it here, but trust me, it's really powerful. So already you can see with these two steps how involved this can be. And you might be thinking, Janelle, this is way too much. I don't have time for this. And I understand. Hey, I get it. I do. You're probably working full time and you have families and things going on. But what I want to say to you is to take one at a time. Start with step one and start doing a deep dive into who you are. And just take your time. And then when you're ready, move on to the why. Right? And jump into my course because my course, you can take at your own pace. So let me just pause here with a little commercial about the Life Purpose course. It is four modules, but I'm going to be expanding it, which I'll explain in a minute. But they are videos and a workbook. And so you work through that at your own pace and you get to have access to that forever. You'll keep the workbook and you'll have access to those videos anytime. And you also will get group sessions with me where we can really flesh this out but they're spaced out to just two a month. So it's not a fast paced course. It's designed to give you time to breathe and sit with this information and dive into it and reflect on it because that is where the magic happens is in that deep reflection. And so I give you that space, but even that course itself is something that you can work with for a long time, however long you need. It's tools I give you to help you with this journey. I didn't have these tools. I had to find them out on my own. So I have put this together from all these different places that I have been to and the things I've learned and I've packaged them together for you so you don't have to do all that searching. So your process will probably be faster than mine. Mine took about four or five years. I don't want yours to take that long. All right, step three, discover your gales. Now that does not stand for a girl's name in this instance. These letters all stand for a different block. What gets in your way? What holds you back? What stops you? How do you self-sabotage? I'm going to go through through these very quickly because each one of them, again, could be a long rabbit trail and we could spend a lot of time on it. But I just want to give you an idea so you can start to look in your life and see, become aware, uncover. That's what the name of this webinar was, right? Uncovering. We want to uncover those things that are blocking you. And a lot of these we aren't aware of. We're not conscious of them. And so they really stop us. So the first one, the G is gremlins. This is your inner critic. This is the most powerful one, holds the most energy and power to stop us because it's very personal. This is the message that you've picked up somewhere. Usually it starts in childhood but it has to do with I'm not good enough or I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not athletic enough. I'm not something enough. And somewhere in your childhood, you took on this message because something happened. Something was communicated to you that you took on as a belief and it's grown over time. And this is usually your mind's way of trying to protect you from something. So mine started, I remember very young, I was like first grade. And I went to the bathroom with a buddy and we're coming back down the hallway afterwards and she's walking behind me and she's giggling. And I have no idea what she's giggling about. And we walk in the classroom and the whole class starts giggling and laughing. And then the teacher comes over to me and turns me around so my back is to the wall and she gently takes my skirt out of my underwear. So my skirt had gotten caught in my underwear. My underwear was showing. And this, this girl let me go into the classroom like that. She thought that was funny. So the message to my little heart in that was, I don't want to be up in front of people. I'll be embarrassed. And then in the second grade, my teacher, I was daydreaming, which I tended to do a lot. And she called me up to the class because she'd been calling on me and I was not hearing her. And she called me up in the front of the room and she kind of tweaked my ear. You got to listen. You got to listen. Well, that embarrassed me. 
So again, the message was like, oh, this is not safe to be up in front of people. And then all through my life, growing up in a big family, lots of kids in the family and around the dinner table, everybody's talking at once and I couldn't be heard, you know, I was trying to talk and nobody was listening to me. And so I turned and talked to the wall and everybody stops like, what are you doing? I'm talking to the wall. Why? Because you guys won't listen to me. And they just laughed and went on and they still didn't listen to me. And it's a big family joke now. But in my heart, it was communicating again to me that people don't want to listen to you. So to not be embarrassed or even rejected, you should probably just be quiet. And then later in my life, I went through those years of abuse and manipulation and the message got stronger and stronger. And so my gremlin was pretty powerful. And it basically said, don't talk, don't share your ideas. Don't get up in front of people because you're going to get embarrassed and people don't, you're not important enough. And what you have to say, see how that can build and be very powerful. And it totally held me back from walking in my destiny and my purpose. So what you do, there's a lot of work around this, but you just start asking yourself, what is that message and where did it come from? And what's it trying to protect me from? And then you give it a new role. Like, I don't need you to protect me from that anymore. You can even give it a name. So it's outside of you, it's not so personal. And I used to talk to it and say, no, when I heard that message, you know, you should be quiet and not speak up. I would say, no, that's not true. Because over here I have evidence that I do add value to people when I share my ideas and when I teach and present. So now what I need you to do is tell me that I should put everything out there like on a neon sign or something. I should go big. And that really helped me to overcome that block. The second one is assumptions. That's what the A is. This, is, this has to do with the past. Well, I tried that before and it didn't work. So I don't think it's going to work again. Or I tried that several times and it just never works for me. That's a block. So just because it happened in the past this way, does that mean it has to happen that way in the future? You've got to challenge that. You're not the same person you were in the past. You know, there's, there could be a different way to approach it. There could be, you know, so don't let that stop you. Just because it happened in the past does not mean that it has to be that way in the future. So watch that thinking of, oh, I tried that. And then another one is interpretations. This is the I. This is where you start making up stories in your head about what's happening. And you start to believe that what you're thinking is the real story. And then you start to respond that way. So for example, let's say you, uh, you're at work one day and your boss kind of rolls his eyes at you or something. And you think, oh, my boss thinks I'm an idiot and I can't do this job and he doesn't believe in me. And so you start to make up this whole story about I'm terrible at my job and I'm probably going to lose my job. And, and then you start acting on that and you hold back and you don't, you don't fully show up in your role and you don't give new ideas and you don't use initiative. And the next thing you know, you're not doing a good job. That's a story you make up in your head. You don't know why he rolled his eyes. So with this one, you've got to think, okay, wait a minute. That's my interpretation, but is this really what's happening? Could there be another way to look at this? Could there be another perspective? Yeah, there probably could be. And that helps you open it all up to see other ideas and it frees you to move forward and realize that, okay, that's just a story I'm making up in my head. And the last one is limiting beliefs. These are not very personal, but they're beliefs you've picked up throughout your life that you've heard maybe from your parents or your teachers or the media or friends or whatever. Things like uh, women should not be assertive because if they're too loud and aggressive, you know, they're perceived as a, you know, be the B word. <laughs> or women should be pregnant and um, barefoot in the kitchen, you know, that whole, all these concepts of what we should and shouldn't do. And they're just kind of out there and they're blanket, kind of blanket beliefs. But when you adopt them and you believe in them and they start to hold you back, like say, you know, you get to a certain age, well, I'm too old to do that now. That's a limiting belief. Where does that come from? So to challenge that one, you want to say, how true is that really? Right? I had that. I had struggle with that. Am I too old to start something new and to become a coach and start a business? Maybe I shouldn't try this. I'm kind of old, you know? And then when I realized, oh, wait a minute, who said that? Who made that rule up? Right? I'm the boss of me. <laughs> There's no like age police out there telling me I can't do something new. I get to determine that. I write the story. I have the pen in my hand to write my own story. 
I am the one that has the steering wheel in my hand. I get to determine this. And that held me a lot. It empowered me to break through that one. All right, so step four, discover your paths. And I say plural because you have a path that led you here and you have a path of where you wanna go from here. So what we do is we look at the path that led you here. What are all of the things that you have put into your toolbox throughout your life? What are the skills you've developed? What's the knowledge that you've gained? What's the expertise that you have, right? What are your, your degrees or your certifications or things like that? And the experiences that you've had in life, whether at work or whether at home or doing you know, hobbies or raising children, whatever it is, you have amassed a bunch of, school, of skills and tools in that toolbox. And so now you can start to take them out and look at them and say, oh, this one, I can see where my strengths helped me here. Or I can see where my personality showed up here. Or I can see where my values really impacted this path that I took or this decision that I made. And you start to look at your, all of your life and your experiences up to now, and you get to determine which ones really will serve you going forward and which ones maybe you're done with. And we look at that and we do a whole bunch of exercises around that as well. And then the roadmap is going forward. So now, after you've gone through all of these steps, and like I said, this is a process and I would give yourself six months or a year even, you know, let yourself discover this. Don't be in a big hurry. And you might not be wanting to quit your day job. I know that's my tagline, but maybe you just want, maybe you like your job, you want to stay there. It's got good benefits. You've got history there. But you do want to discover who you are, your purpose, so that you can change and tweak things to make it fit better so that you are satisfied, so that you are fully, fully expressing all of you in that role. So it's still important to discover that. So once you've done all this work, you want to start creating a roadmap. So I always use this method for setting goals and creating this vision out there that really works well for me. And I teach it in this course. And it's basically creating three goals that you want to reach every quarter. They're like three mountains. And along the way, there are these base camps that get you there. So you set those three goals. This is what I want to achieve in the next quarter. That's going to get me to my long range goal of fulfilling this purpose, whatever that is. And that comes out of doing all this work. And then you start setting up those base camp goals. So what's going to get me there to that first mountain. And then each one of those base camp goals, you underneath that, you list out action steps. What are the actions I need to take? So for example, this past quarter, or last quarter, I was creating this course. So that was my big goal. And then I broke it down into three base camp goals. <clears throat> one was developing the curriculum, and one was um, putting together all the materials. You know, so I had, to, I had to create the outline of what I wanted it to cover and the objective, and then each module. So then what was the content, and then what was the promotion? How am I gonna get it out there? get people in it. And then I broke those down, each one of them, into action steps. What do I need to do this week? What do I need to do today to move me forward? I have to write content. I have to put together workbooks, videos, and things like that. So you take the bigger goals and you just break them down. But in order to have those bigger goals, you've got to know where you want to go. You got to know who you are. So you need a plan at the end of it. You need a blueprint. You need a roadmap. At this point, it's very important to understand a principle that I learned when I was learning to drive a motorcycle. Yes, you can just call me motorcycle mama. <laughs> and this was all my husband's idea because he really loves motorcycles. I didn't particularly want to drive a motorcycle, but I went along with it and I took the class and they taught us, you know, one very important principle which my mom taught me when she was teaching me how to drive and that is you're going to go wherever you're looking right wherever your eyes are focused that's where you're going to go if you're driving a car she would tell me that over and over and over again so don't be looking at the sign over there or the car next to you because you're going to go that way 
Same thing with riding a motorcycle. And then an added piece to this was when you are turning on, in a motorcycle, you have to lean the motorcycle in. And the reason is because the tire needs to touch the ground. If you try to turn it this way, you're not connected to the ground and you could slip and fall, which I actually did. I couldn't get that lean to the right very well and I ended up giving up my motorcycle license. I did pass the course, but barely. They just took mercy, you know, pity on me, I think. But when you are planning out your roadmap, you've got to remember that where you're focused is where you're going to go. So you get on that road and you have your signposts and your markers and you've got your destination, but you've got to keep your eyes on that destination. Because if you look over here, you're going to go there. You're going to get off track. And then you've got to lean into it so that you connect to your road and you connect to your path and you connect to your purpose and your passions right? And your dreams and your values and you connect to who you are so that when you're leaning in, you are totally in control and you're totally in connection and you're going to go where you want to go. So you need to remember that. And one way to really get connected and get clear is to get some help. So whether you sign up for my course or not, get some help. Find somebody to help you. This is not this whole process is not something that you do on your own. I don't know anybody that has. It's very hard to do it on your own. So I've given you this, these tools today in this webinar to help you get started. But I do want you to understand that if you really want to go deep, if you're really serious about waking up to your life, then you need to get committed. You need to make that conscious decision and choice. You're going to do what it takes to really get you there because it's too important to not pursue your purpose. So I want to talk a little bit more about this course. It's called the Life Purpose Course for Women 40 Plus. This is what it looks like right now. Four modules, nine videos, four digital workbooks, three assessments, and four group coaching sessions. I've just finished the first round and it went fabulously. But I did discover some things that I need to add in. I need to expand it a little bit and it'll probably expand even more eventually. But this next go round, we're going to start again in September and I'm going to add some things to it. Now the price right now is 149, which is a steal of a deal. It should be at least 300. But what I'm doing now and I'm offering it to you for watching this webinar, this offer will go away after Friday, whatever the date is, today is the 20th, so what is Friday? 21, 22, 23, 24? So if you sign up by then, you will get my expanded version at the same price. And the expanded version looks like this. I'm going to add in a module, so that means another video, another workbook, and that will cover those gales. So we're going to go into depth around what is blocking you and see if we can see what in your life in particular, you know, where you're getting hung up and, and come up with strategies to help you bust through those blocks. Okay. I'm also going to add in two more group sessions because I've discovered that four is really not enough. So this will give you even more time to dig in and to get the most out of this. And then I'm adding in a bonus, 30-minute private coaching session with me, which that by itself, by itself, would cost the cost of this whole entire course, at least. So you're getting a whole lot more for the same price. It's going to go up to $297 eventually, and it really should be more like five or $600. Now, you might be thinking, oh, she's just trying to sell me something. No, I'm trying to serve you, really because I know that you need this and I know how powerful it is and I want to help you, but I can't do it for free. So I can't make it really any cheaper. <laughs> That's impossible. But I also want you to invest something in yourself. And it's very true that when you invest in your development and growth, you get more out of it because you've got some skin in the game. I mean, that's just the way it is, folks. I've invested a ton in my development and I know when I'm invested in it, how much more involved and engaged I am in the process and how much I get out of it as opposed to when I do something for free. 
When I sign up for free programs, I don't show up. I forget about them. I'm, they're not that important. I'll get to them later. I mean, that's my attitude. And that's normal. That's how most of us are. But you bet, you better believe it. If I put some money into it, I'm going to show up. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to get the most out of it. Here are some things that a couple of ladies have said about this program. Liz said, through this program, I created a roadmap for discovering who I am. The exercises were key to challenging me to think at a deeper level. They were challenging, but good. It helped me to dig deep and do the homework and see myself more clearly through the tangle of memories and feelings and perceptions of myself. Having a coach as a mirror asking questions helped me go deeper. I now have a list of three steps to explore a path based on a solid knowledge of who I really am. This is so cool and it just excites me to see this. It's so true that it's going at a deeper level. It's thinking at a deeper level. And most of us on our own just don't go there. We don't know how. And then Kimberly said, I was nervous about this at first, but ultimately I felt comfortable as I was given the freedom and the safety to share all ranges and thoughts and emotions I may not have otherwise shared in front of a small group. I discovered that maybe my desire and ability to explore a completely different side of me than most have seen are not all that crazy or unreachable. She saw some things in her that she had thought previously, oh, that's just crazy. And we were all like, no, that's awesome. You should definitely explore that side of you. It was incredible. So we're gonna start September 10th, the next go around, and this is where you can go and register. The group sessions are on the second and fourth Mondays of the month, so they're spread out. It gives you time to work through stuff. And we meet from eight to nine, p.m. Eastern time and we really get to know each other and share and I coach each person so I have to limit this to six people in the group so that I can give my attention to everyone and if you enroll now you can actually get started you can take those assessments and start on the workbook for module one and get going so I wouldn't wait if I were you if you're interested in this get started jump in there right now let me just share with you my my website, I think I have it up here. Do I have it up? I don't see it. Okay. Oh, you know what? Let me see here. Let me see if I have it here. Yeah. Okay, right here. Here we go. So when you go to my website, this is where you'll land. And there's a little video where I go into the highlights of the course. And then down here, go through each module. And like I said, I'll be adding a fifth module to know your gales. And then down here, you know, you can do this self-paced without the group sessions. You get all the materials. You do get to come into the private Facebook group, which I forgot to mention. There's a private Facebook group just for those people in this course. And it's a great place to get more support and ask more questions and you get stuck. And I'm in there, you know, commenting and sharing and you can share with each other. Uh, what is happening on your journey. So there's connection even between one group session to another. So you're not alone in this. You are never alone. And then if you want to ask some questions, I am happy to get on a phone call with you and talk to you about this. The self-study format is 99 and the virtual group is 149, which will go up. And then down here, it just talks about how we'll meet in Zoom and uh, what happens in those meetings and then you get all these workbooks and videos and the assessments are all included in the private Facebook group so I know this is a powerful course and that it works and that's why I wanted to share it with you but I hope that you're taking away from this webinar a lot of great ideas and understanding of what you can do now and some exercises some things some activities to get you started to discovering your purpose and your passion. So thank you so much for coming and showing up. I would love to hear from you. Let me know if there's anything at all that I can do for you. And go ahead and check out that course if, if you believe it's something that you're interested in. I'm willing to do it in two payments if that will help you. I just want you to get started. I want you to discover who you are and how awesome you are and discover the gifts that you have inside that are waiting to be expressed. 
All right, so have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.